Alright, what's up everyone? Welcome to Star Hunts Reviews. My name is Mark and in this uh, little video podcast episode, um, I call it a video podcast because most of my videos these days are podcast long form. Uh, please slap like on them, subscribe here to me on YouTube. That's the best thing you could ever do for my channel if you don't want to join my Patreon or if you, uh, you know, you can't uh, join the channel members here on YouTube, which basically you can join for a dollar. You can watch all of my content ad free. Um... This is kind of like just a better format for me to get out some of my thoughts and stuff. And, and people seem to like them. Um, all right. So, look. Y'all see the boy over there. Jamie Lannister. Uh, he's going to be the topic of this little, you know, this little episode. Um, Jamie is not a bad guy. Jamie is one of the best characters of all time. Okay. Everything he's done, everything he's done is all for the greater good. Like, the only thing that he's done that isn't for the greater good is fuck his sister. Okay? You can't argue that that is for the greater good. I've tried. I've tried. But it isn't. It's actually for the terrible good because they gave the world Joffrey. Right? So that's the worst thing that Jamie's ever did was stick it in his sister and not pull out. Right? And then he gave the world Joffrey. He gave us all Joffrey. <laughs> It's also like he's Joffrey's father, but also he didn't have a direct hand in raising Joffrey, and he saw who and what Joffrey was becoming. So that's like the worst thing he's ever did, which is honestly, it's way worse than what everybody else blames him for. Because once you have children, you realize if you fail your kids, then you're not just a failure in life, but you're a failure in their eyes, and you are the biggest, in my opinion, that's like the worst thing you could ever do, is like your kids see you as a fucking loser, right? Um, so... That's the only thing he's done, is that he failed as a father. That's the worst thing he's done. Now you're probably like, dude, hold up, take a step back. What if I just kept doing that for like 30 minutes? Alright, so anyway, got that out of my system. That's the worst thing he's ever done. Yeah, he pushed a little kid out of a tower. Oh, the little kid shouldn't have been climbing up that tower being a little peeping Tom. Brand, don't be a peeping Tom if you don't want to fall from great heights. Ah, your mama told you, don't climb that tower, you're going to fall. Your daddy told you, listen to your mama. Everybody told you, stop doing that, you're going to fall. And guess what? He fell. I think that if Jamie and Cersei weren't up in that tower, there would have been a little bit of snow right when he tried to, because, you know, he's kind of, kind of sprawled out, right? And then he tries to make the last leap up to the ledge, and then he gets caught, and that's where you see, and then Jamie pushes him right to Even if Jamie wasn't there, there would have been a, a good amount of enough snow to make him lose his grip, and he would have fell backwards. Or it's called the broken tower, it probably would have had some loose stones and he would have went to grab one that he was unfamiliar with and he would have fell backwards. Therefore, his destiny would have been unlocked. That's how you justify that. If Jamie hadn't have pushed Bran out the window, Bran wouldn't be on his journey to become the Three-Eyed Raven. He honestly would have died down in King's Landing with Ned Stark or been a prisoner of the Lannisters because of that, his crippledness, his handicappedness has kept him away and safe enough for him to go on his journey. So explain to me how Jamie Lannister is a bad guy. Explain to me. Explain to me how Jamie Lannister is not the ultimate hero. Okay? He pushed Bran out the window. If Bran had have fallen on his own, Bran would have lost in all confidence. And the fall would have probably been worse because Bran wouldn't have been held on to first and then pushed. He would have just straight slipped. And he probably would have smacked his head on the way down because Jamie pushes him back first. So he falls and just breaks his legs. But if he had fallen on his own, if Jamie wasn't there, he would have smacked his dome. Like, do 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 You ever taken a stick and ran it across a piece of board that has waves in it? I think it's called like a wushitataka whoopashi. I just made that up. But literally, it's where you take a stick and it goes. 
That would have been Brand's head on the rocks. Brand would have, you can't heal, you can't, you can't be Brand the broken if your brain's dead. He would have been Brand the dead, right? If Jamie hadn't have pushed him backwards, Brand would have killed himself on his fall because that would have happened because he's climbing something called the Broken Tower anyway. And he has to go on that journey. He has to become the three-eyed crow because the only way to do that is by losing something. So Blood Raven became the last green seer by losing an eye. Jon Snow will become who he is by losing his life but then getting it back, right? Beric had to lose something to become who he is. So all of these characters that have to do certain things to become great people, Jamie Lannister had to lose his hand to become the even greater individual than he is, right? It was meant to happen, okay? Bran would have fallen and... You ever heard Phil Collins' bass solo? I can feel it calling in the Well, that's, that's a way off beat. Oh, Lord, I can see it calling in the air. That's Bran's head on the way down the broken tower. The people watching would have been like, "Oh my God, is that a melon with a with a with a uh, whaley with a wacky flailing inflatable arm tube man attached to it?" No, it would have been Bran's head. I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh Lord. Dun, 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 dun. Like an, I've been waiting for this moment for all my life. Ba-dum, ba-dum. Oh Lord, oh Lord. All right, I had to finish that out. I'm like Andy from The Office. If I don't finish the beat, it's going to be stuck in my head, and then I'll have to be stuck on it the whole time of this video, and I won't be able to focus on what I'm saying. Ba-dum, 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 ba-dum. All right, yeah. I got that out of my system. Seven minutes in. This is cool. So, uh, Jamie... Um, Jamie Lannister is a good guy, right? So I was serious, right? The worst thing he's done is actually... <laughs> what, let me rephrase that. One of the worst things that everybody thinks he did push Bran out the window. It's actually the best thing he did. He saved Bran's life. Bran would have been... Boop, 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 boop. That would have been his head. His head would have hit the wall. You can't come back from that. You can come back from broken legs. Your legs can be like this. And you can still have your brain working fully. Your legs could go like that. Then go like this. And when you stand up, they could go sideways and then just fall down. But if your brain still works, you're still alive. Bran was always meant to fall from that broken tower. Jamie made it so that he would survive that fall. All right? And then you look at, you know, one of the other things that he did, which isn't bad, and I think most readers know this, killing the Mad King. Jamie saved the world. Jamie saved <laughs> the world, okay? Because the Mad King, right, get this, is such a dumbass that he, he had caches of wildfire all throughout King's Landing, right? That explosion would have wiped out King's Landing, everybody near it, and it's such a large enough explosion that there's a strong chance that the tectonic plates would have shifted, and it would have caused a tidal wave, and that tidal wave would have made the storm that was already existing when Daenerys was born so much worse, and Daenerys would have died, so Jaime Lannister didn't just save the millions of people that live in King's Landing, but he also saved Daenerys, who's going to save the world. Daenerys saves the world? Coincidence? No, I think not. Daenerys, the world, the save, duh. No, seriously. He literally saved the world. <laughs> if he hadn't have did what he did, Daenerys wouldn't have gone where she went, wouldn't have gotten those dragon eggs, wouldn't have hatched him. Wouldn't have been able to wipe out the White Walkers when she eventually makes it back to Westeros. So Jamie Lannister saved the world. Okay? I don't understand why people don't realize that Jamie is Azor Ahai. Jamie is the light that is saving the world. I'm sucking my microphone stick. <laughs> Man, this is a look at that. <laughs> Sir Hunts with the Japanese here.
check it out. I'm Goten. Or wait, uh, I guess, I, who, who is it? Is it Goat? I guess it's Young Gohan who has that haircut from the original Dragon Ball Z series. Young, well, no, not Young Gohan. It's middle middle aged Gohan, but I can't remember. But my favorite character was Vegetable Prince Vegetable. I remember when I first found that out as a kid that the Dragon Ball Z characters are named after food. I that shit blew my mind. I thought I was a genius. I'd go up to my friends and I'd be like, "Yo, you want to get the color image of Kakarot?" And they'd be like, "Yeah." And I'd be like, "You just bought a carrot." And they'd be like, "What?" And I'd be like, "Kakarot, carrot, Vegeta, vegetable, broccoli, broccoli." <laughs> it's nuts. It's hilarious too. Like anyway, um. So yeah, that was it. That was my theory on Jamie. I hope y'all enjoyed this. It's like, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, that actually is kind of the most large majority chunk of this video. Um, I wanted to mention uh, this next part, um, which is not really a theory. It's just kind of interesting. So the last person that Vane Pool sees is Arya Stark. So after Ned is imprisoned, the Lannisters go about in the City Watchmen, Gold Cloaks. They go about uh, killing all of Ned's forces, all of the men in his house. Uh, they try to capture his daughters. They do capture Sansa, but Arya gets away, right? Arya is in her lesson with Sirio, and then she escapes when Sirio's about to die by Maren Trant, right? Sirio has his sword cut in half. He's definitely dead. He's dead as hell. He didn't he didn't make it out of that fight because Maren Trant did make it out of the fight, and he's alive. So it's possible that Sirio Pharrell is a faceless man, and he's pretending to be Maren Trant, but why hasn't he striked yet? Because Maren Trant is... It's poisoned. Marin Trant is supposed to be testing food for Tommen and Marin Trant in the last couple of chapters we have in the Dance of Dragons. We find out Cersei says he's sick. He's not feeling well. Jamie thinks that he doesn't look well when Jamie sees him before he departs for the Riverlands. So, um, that maybe that's the case. But when Arya, after she leaves that training lesson and she realizes that, you know, why would her father send send gold or send the King's Guard to come pick her up? That doesn't make sense. He'd send her own man. So she runs away. Um, uh, she sneaks through the shadows. She runs into uh, the stable boy. She kills him. But before that, she runs into Vane Pool. Vane Pool is her father's steward. Uh, Vane Pool sees Arya and he goes, Arya Underfoot. It's it's kind of sad. She sneaks up. She she's walking up to him and his eyes are closed, so she thinks he's dead. But then when she gets near him, he opens them and he goes, Arya Underfoot. And he goes, You must warn your father. And she like, you know, it's like, oh, this is terrible. This is terrible. It just traumatizes the shit out of her. Good job, Vane Pool. Tell her to go see her dad, who she does see, and he gets his head promptly removed. You dumbass. So anyway, <clears throat> it's kind of interesting that the last person Vane Pool sees is Arya. Um, and Vane Poole's daughter, Jane Poole, is pretending to be Arya in the veil, and he tells Arya, right, to go warn her father, but then Jane Poole, his daughter, should have been warned about what was going to happen to him, I, that, or what was going to happen to her. That's, that's just crazy the way George writes these books. If like, I know he had a plan, right? But he didn't know exact, the exact beats of where he was going to get, uh, you know, especially in the Dance of Dragons with Jane Poole's plot line, right? Um, obviously, uh, she's sent up north in A Storm of Swords or Feast for Crow or, uh, 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 yeah, I think it happens in A Storm of Swords when Jamie departs. Um, so he kind of knew that was going to happen for a while, right? But it's just crazy. That the technically, in some sort of context, in a really rough context, Vane Poole sees his daughter one last time through Arya because his daughter is pretending to be Arya, and even though she's in Stannis' camp, it's possible that she'll still die with people believing she's Arya, aside from Theon, if Jon never actually gets to see her and she's dead or dies beforehand because she's pretty traumatized. She could do something stupid, which would cause you know, Stannis to burn her or something, like, I know it's not gonna, but I'm just saying, like, this is, this is crazy, this is a rant, I just did a, uh, 30 minute episode, uh, that's up on my podcast, it'll be up on YouTube, or it's up on my Patreon, it'll be up on YouTube in the next few days or so, um, <clears throat> uh, so yeah, let me know what you think about my thoughts down below in the comment section, thank you for watching, a long night, it's how three is, but